How do you connect people with God? You take them into the story, his story, and you help them to explore the world from there. Hi, I'm Wesley Brainerd, Artistic Director of Character Ministry of the Arts and creator of Luke Comes to Life. Since 1999, I've been carving out a sacred space through scripture telling so that people can meet with God in the story. And in this short video series, Storytelling for Pastors, I'm going to share with you some tools that you can use to take your storytelling to the next level and some examples so that you can know exactly when to use these tools to enhance the teaching and preaching that you share when you are telling stories. So here we go. Tool number one, take on elements of character. So the first thing we're going to do is to quickly scan the story or the scripture passage and count the people. Look for quotation marks. How many people are in the story? How many people speak? How many people do you intend to portray? Before we can decide which elements of character to build with, we need to know how many people there are. How do we begin to build elements of character? I'd like to suggest four simple devices. The first one is focal point. So you've scanned a passage, you found some quotation marks, and you know that there are a couple of people in your story. When you begin to read, you can read as yourself. You're the narrator. When you get to the first person, you establish that person with a focal point, and you're looking in that direction. You come back to yourself when the quotation, part, quotation marks end, and then there's another person in your story. So when you begin to read that person, you're going to look in that new direction. You've established now this is your second focal point. So now let's try a simple application. I've chosen a short passage of scripture from Luke chapter 3. It happens to be with John the Baptist. And I've chosen a focal point to my right, a focal point which is center to the camera, and a focal point to my left. This is how it might work. Verse 9. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What shall we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, The man who has two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. The tax collectors also came. So, I have a focal point to my right, a focal point to my left, and a focal point center. One thing to note, if you're doing this in your sanctuary, I would widen out the focal points just a bit. I've been practicing and noticed that on camera the focal points must be a bit narrow. So I've made them narrow so that you can see the effect that it has. But in your sanctuary I'm going to imagine that you'll need about a 45 degree angle from your widest focal points. And that will help give your audience, your church family, a chance to come into your story. This can work in any situation, whether you're seated at a table, whether you're standing, whether you're behind a pulpit, walking across the platform, this should work in any situation. Just simply adding focal points to create a framework for your church family to see how the passage of Scripture or the story unfolds. Number two, set up or set apart your story or the reading from Scripture. We do this quite naturally already. When you read from the Bible, you might say something like, and now let's rise for the reading of God's Word. You might say, and now we're reading from Luke chapter 15, or announce the reference, and there's rustling of pages. And that helps to set up this moment. What we say, the attitude that we hold, all of these things set up the Scripture. You can do the same thing or a similar thing with a story. 
Setting up your story might mean moving from behind the pulpit, going over to the right or going over to the left, and creating a space from which to tell your story. That setting up of the story will help your audience to begin to cast their imagination for what is about to unfold. Set up or set apart your story or scripture reading. Number three, physicalization. You've already seen examples of physicalization. What are they? Physicalizations can be as simple as a posture, a way of standing, a way of sitting or half sitting, a way of holding my hands or moving my hands and arms. These physicalizations combine quickly to create colorful people in your story. As a mime artist, physicalization is front and center. As a storyteller, physicalization helps to paint the characters and the delineation between those characters throughout the story. In a teaching and preaching rhetorical style, Think of physicalization as simply the power punch to a moment. Standing with a stern posture, a confident posture, or even an uncertain posture can help drive home the point and make your church family feel a part of that story and a part of that moment. Number four, the voice. The voice can lend color and texture to the people in your story. There are a lot of ways, very simple ways, that we can affect the voice of a person in our story. How fast a person speaks says something about that person or the moment. What does it say? It says that there's someone, someone is very, very excited and they're very, very, very concerned about something that's going on. Conversely, a person that speaks slowly says something else. A pitch, a pitch range can be the thing that adds life and color to a character for a moment. So build a voice for a person in your story with pace, with pitch, with volume, until you have confidence that that person that you have built belongs in your story. So whether you're telling a story to illustrate a point or telling a story from Scripture, or reading a passage of Scripture, I hope you'll be intentional about bringing your church family deeper into the moment. In this introduction to Storytelling for Pastors, we've looked at ways that you can build in elements of character to the telling of your stories, using four devices. Focal point, setting up or setting apart your story or Scripture reading, putting in elements of physicalization and elements to the way that you use your voice. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in part two.